So guys, building interiors on MDF buildings are always lacking, quite a lot. People just tend to paint them, they're not massively important because it's a gaming piece. This is where I like to try to just go a little bit over the top. It's not overly complicated and it's not that expensive to do. It just takes a bit of time making sure you do some decent cuts. Now the first thing missing from this building is a chimney stack. It's obviously got a chimney in there, um, but there's none in the up or downstairs. I'm not doing the downstairs of this building because it's going to be filled with uh, quite a lot of debris and rubble, so it's going to be very unplayable. But the upstairs that you can see, it's going to have a nice chimney stack. Now the roof doesn't fit perfectly on the top of the building, it's actually on the inside, so there's a 3mm difference from the, the wall on the roof that holds it all together to the wall of the building. To hide that indentation, what I'm going to be doing is using craft card. This craft card is 1.5mm deep, so I'm using, cutting it to size, and then we're going to stick two pieces of it together to fill that place so it's flush. It also makes the roof a lot more of a, a solid fixture so when it's on there it's got something to rest across the entire model so it does make it a lot stronger as well just be quite careful with your cuts it doesn't matter if you're overly perfect because we're going to be covering this with other stuff later but the neater it is the better it's going to be now the chimney the chimney needs to be attached to the roof but not attached to the building because i want it so it still all comes apart but it still looks like it doesn't come apart if that makes sense so making sure that the back wall and the card and the chimney all line up properly and using card like this makes it very simple to cut and shave and sand and work with just so it's simple I'm gluing it together with super glue you could use PVA however with this being a test model I was doing it quite quickly um, so I'm just working with it so I can get cracking and not have to wait around when I'm chain building all these and doing like 20 of them at once I will use PVA because by the time I come to the next step it will be dry so if you are doing it yourself I would suggest using some form of white glue now what would a chimney breast be without a fireplace all I'm doing is cutting through the first two layers of the cardboard just to, re to make an indentation and then making a, a half, a fireplace half, just out of more of the cardboard. And then just bevel it off so it just looks a little bit neater um, so it blends into the floor better. Now me, when I'm building terrain, I'm not a big fan of painting stuff. So I found this textured brick paper. Be warned though, this is not actually brick paper. It's painted to look like bricks and the texture is more ovals and bumps, but when it's painted like that, it does look like a very realistic brick look. However, if you want to repaint this, it will then not look like bricks. So just be warned, you have to use it the color that it is. I got this off eBay, it was very sort of affordable. It was about 25 pounds after all the shipping charge and everything from Greece, um, but it is quite a nice look and all you're gonna do is cut it to shape and fit it into place, which once you see it all done, it, it's a very nice effect. However, it would have been a lot easier to do this before I built the buildings, uh, which I will do for the rest of them. Now, once you've got all this brick paper in place and it's starting to look something like, it's now a good time to start thinking about the windows because we're going to be building up other things on top of this which will hide the sticking of the windows in place. I did try using mobile phone screen protectors. However, cutting them to size just made them crack and splinter and not work very well. So I went back to the good old faithful, which is a bit of plastic packaging. Um, it's not what I really wanted to use, but it works and they're going to be smashed up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And it's just as simple of cutting them to size and super gluing them in place. Now, once they're in place for damage, just stick your knife through them and cut the areas out that you want. Now, you know I don't like painting my terrain. So for plaster, I'm going for just packaging card and it's white. Uh, the reason I picked this is because it's white and in the 20s, 30s, they would use lime plaster, which is a off white in color. So I've done this, I dip it in some water and then I just tear it. So you get that sort of crumbled off plaster look. 
Now it is a bit white at the beginning, but once you start weathering and washing this later, you'll get a far better appearance and the texture of the card once it's been wet appears so much more like plaster, it's great. So the reason I'm building it like this is so it adds a bit of depth to the thin MDF terrain and two, what's more realistic than a wall, some plaster and next up, some wallpaper. Wallpapers are one of them things that are quite hard to find for our scale. However, I found some free ones that you can download. However, they are 112 scale. Now, for the life of me, I couldn't get them to tile up right and I was stressing a bit. So I messaged my mate Josh from the Pickle Jar. Go subscribe below. Um, and he just laid them out for me. He said it was quite simple to do. I just couldn't get my head around it. So he laid these out for me and it made it so they were a good scale and they look great. And I got about 10 or 12 designs and they were pretty easy to find on Google. Just search for Doll's House wallpapers. Uh, and once they were printed out, they look great. So thanks Pickle and go subscribe to his channel and give him a hand. Now, I just printed these on some normal paper, nothing special. I thought the cheaper the paper, the better actually, uh, because when we want to tear and rip these up, at least that they're gonna tear and rip and fall apart quite easily. If you was going to do this for an intact building, however, I would suggest using better quality paper so you don't tear it accidentally, uh, because these did rip and everything quite easily. Now, the tip to this is having a uh, a sh very sharp razor blade and keeping it sharp. I change my blade every every few cuts just to make sure that it cuts through the paper easily. However, this is when this video got very costly. While I was recording this, I went to go get another razor blade. Uh, and as I came back to the table, I knocked my tripod over. Um, and as I went to stop the camera from falling over to its impending doom, I pushed it onto the floor because I, I re panicked, I reacted. Now this cost, this is about two grand plus worth of damage. Um, my C100, uh, the screen broke off. We have repaired that. Um, it only articulates up and down now. Um, it doesn't fully articulate either, um, but we've got that so I can use it. However, it's lost all its uh, resale value. Um, it's more or less worthless now. And uh, the lens that I've just bought um, cost 500 quid second hand. Um, that's demolished. Um, I've took it in for repair. I don't know how much it's gonna cost for repairing. It might actually be cheaper to buy a new one, but we'll see. Um, the top handle on top of the camera, um, that is the uh, where I mount my microphones, my XLRs to it. And uh, yeah, that's completely destroyed. And without the top handle, there's no internal audio. Um, so I'm pretty stuck for multicam because I can't put audio into my second camera, which is a bit of a thing. The top handles are 350 pounds for a used one, I think. <laughs> and the Atmos recorder that I record to, absolutely shot. And they're about 500 quid. So yeah, this video has cost an absolute fortune. I, for them that are bothered, I, I, I tried claiming on my house insurance, it's not covered. And with it not being an asset of the business because it was my personal camera, um, it's not covered. It's my negligence that's caused that. If you do want to donate to help me replenish some of the losses so I can buy the gear back, uh, it'd be great. If you don't, that's fine. Just watch my videos and carry on supporting, but there'll be a link to everything below. But anyway, guys, if you want to support me, the donation link will be all below, but let's crack on with the video. Enough of the somberness. So using your fresh blade, just chop away at your, like, your wood beams, the floor, just to make it so it's a bit more raggedy and a bit damaged. I'm using oil washers to sort of stain the wood. Um, I don't want to paint it, I just want it to stain and take on the MDF's look. Um, so that's why I'm using a black brown sort of oil wash. It soaks right in and you get this sort of stained wooden floor, um, which looks quite nice. And especially once we grubby it all up, it'll look great. Now this is where using the oil washers over the almost the correct colour stuff to start with looks great. Just throw some washers on there, it absorbs in, it just taints the plaster and everything and it just looks nice and grubby and pretty cool. Now what house wouldn't be complete without skirting board, architrave, picture hangers, wooden fancy rosettes and stuff like that. Ted reached out to me uh, about a month or so ago now and he 
asked if there's anything that I'd want making for this board. And I asked for this thing because it's not something I could find on the internet. However, he's put like a little pack together uh, where you can download them off his My Mini Factory. I'll put his link below. There's no affiliation. I'm not getting any commission or anything. I'm just helping out a viewer that made these things for me for this, for this big board build. So thanks a lot, mate. Now, they are quite delicate because they're quite thin, uh, but what I do is just print them out and lay them out in, because it's quite hard to tell what they are till they've got paint on them. So I try and keep them organized and then I spray them with a green color uh, because green, orange, uh, and colors like that are quite popular around the date that I'm building the board. And all I do is just super glue them in place. Um, we are gonna be damaging them, so if they do slip out and they're not perfect, it doesn't matter. Um, but it just adds that little bit more realism to the model building. Now the one thing with MDF buildings you can never get away with is how thin they are and the edge, it looks like wood. Now I had this idea and I thought I'd give it a go. Now I <laughs> I thought this was going to be quite complicated, one of them really fiddly things that I wish I thought I'd never do. I bought these scale bricks off eBay, you get this amount for about seven, eight quid. So I wouldn't suggest building a building with it, but with the paper, the plaster the, and the brick paper, plus the rendering that I've done on the outside, these bricks are almost the perfect width of the, the gap that I've put in there. And it hides that MDF edge and it makes it far more realistic. The only thing I'm gonna to have to do is paint them to match the, the brick paper because I can't paint the brick paper as I've discussed earlier. So sticking these on was actually quite easy. Do use tweezers, it makes a massive difference, but sticking these in place just changes the entire look of the building and makes it look far more realistic. Realistic in the sense that if a building was a single skin, uh, it'd look better. I do know that buildings are two, three courses thick thick uh, however you can't really emulate this without remodeling an entire model but working with what we've got for a gaming piece I'm very happy with the look and these extra little bricks just really do finish it off and I can't wait to paint them all up and get all the houses together looking brilliant now this is how I work I just sort of make a rough one see how it looks I'm happy with it I've got some bit extras that I need to add to it but now I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna build the whole town in one go, which I will document and show you, and then we can start to actually painting it properly, weathering it properly and finishing it off. Now, how much did them bricks add to this build? They really just get rid of that laser cut edge. They just really nicely finish it off. The only thing that I'm not a big fan about is it looks a bit angular still on the outside, so I'm gonna stick some plaster in there and then break it away, and then when we paint it, it'll hide it. And then that way, the bricks will just look a lot more realistic. Don't take the paint job as that's how it's gonna be because we're gonna paint all this, I'm gonna weather all of them, add rubble to them, we're gonna add furniture to them, um, we're gonna add, if we can, like bathrooms and stuff like that, depending on the size and what we've got to work with. But that's all coming once we've got all the buildings put together. Till then, I can't do anything. This was just to see what I can do in a reasonable amount of time that's cost effective, but it makes the most of a, an MDF kit. And I'm pretty happy with like the coving, the architrave, the plaster work, the wallpaper. I should have used a bit of a brighter colored or a stronger pattern so it showed up more, but I know that now. Um, so yeah, what do you think? Put in the comments below. If you like these little videos, guys, where they go into a bit more depth of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, let me know in the comments below. So once the project's done, I will do a whole video of the entire project and do snippets of each section that we've done. And then if you want an in-depth video, there'll be links to that coming back to these videos that we've done now. And I will put all the videos to do with this build in a playlist as well for you. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe as always. Um, if you wanna help out, there's the donation link to help me replace the cameras that I've chucked on the floor, more or less. <laughs> and uh, uh, if you wanna support me any other way, if you don't wanna do that, there's obviously all the other ways like buying from a shop. Uh, we are having a, um, a, a rapid sale on all the paints and brushes and things at the moment, just clearing some space for some uh, awesome new products, uh, which, you'll see later in the year. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next week for a, a pretty cool video. It's a bit more Luke's APSE old old days video. I'll see you in a bit.
Love, love, love.